Have you ever wondered why so many people struggle with their weight despite trying everything in the book? Hi, this is Ways and How, and today, I want to take you on a journey through the misunderstood world of weight management and insulin resistance. This isn't just about losing weight. It's about understanding the underlying mechanisms that drive our body's behavior. Let's start by addressing a harsh reality. Individuals dealing with obesity often face the last socially acceptable form of prejudice. They are ridiculed, shamed, and blamed for their condition. As many healthcare professionals will tell you, they have seen people who these experiences have scarred. The prevailing sentiment in both public and medical circles tends to be that if only these individuals had better control over their eating, they wouldn't be in this situation. But let me clear up a major misconception. Obesity is not a character flaw. It's a complex hormonal disease involving several key players, with insulin being one of the most critical. Most of obesity patients exhibit a condition known as insulin resistance. Now, what does that mean? Imagine insulin as a key that unlocks your cells to allow sugar to enter and be used as energy. When you're insulin resistant, it's like the locks on your cells have changed, and insulin can't open the door anymore. As a result, sugar builds up in the blood, leading to higher insulin production and eventually diabetes. Surprisingly, nearly half of the adult population in the U.S. could be facing issues related to insulin resistance, which includes diabetes or prediabetes. These conditions aren't limited to people who are overweight. Many normal weight individuals are insulin resistant and might not even know it. The real kicker is how insulin resistance can make you hungrier and more likely to store fat. This is a setup for a vicious cycle. Eat more carbs, increase your blood sugar, spike your insulin, and gain more weight. What if we could break this cycle? What if the solution lies not in consuming more medication or enduring more shame, but in understanding and adjusting our diets? Consider this. Every food you eat impacts your glucose and insulin levels differently. Carbohydrates spike them quickly and high, proteins less so, and fats barely. Remember the last time you had a large meal heavy in carbs and felt hungry soon after? That's insulin at work. Now, you might think the answer for those with diabetes is to monitor their carb intake. But strangely enough, dietary guidelines often suggest a relatively high carb intake. It seems counterintuitive. What if instead we took a different approach? In some healthcare practices, the doctors would turn the traditional model on its head. They would recommend a low carbohydrate diet where fats and proteins take center stage, not as a trendy diet, but as a medical necessity for those dealing with insulin resistance and diabetes. This approach isn't just about cutting out sugars and starches. It's about reintroducing our bodies to what they can handle without stress. Some doctors will tell you that they have seen remarkable transformations in their patients who adopt this way of eating. People who have reduced or even eliminated their need for diabetes medications, including insulin. These aren't isolated incidents, but consistent outcomes that challenge the progressive nature of type 2 diabetes as it's currently understood. One prominent doctor shared a story of one of his patients who came to him after years of struggling with diabetes and escalating doses of insulin. She had accepted her fate as permanently ill until he adjusted her diet. By significantly reducing her carbohydrate intake and focusing on healthy fats and proteins, this patient was able to wean off insulin completely. Five months into this new lifestyle, not only has she lost weight, but her diabetes was in remission. But why isn't this approach more widely accepted? Two significant barriers exist. The inertia of traditional medical advice and the complex web of financial interests. 
changing established guidelines is slow and fraught with bureaucratic hurdles. Moreover, much money is made from prescribing medications to manage diseases rather than curing them. Yet the evidence favoring a low-carbohydrate approach for insulin resistance and diabetes management is mounting. It's not just anecdotal. Numerous studies support its efficacy and benefits, which include reducing inflammatory markers potentially linked to other chronic diseases like cancer. In conclusion, it's time we rethink our approach to food, insulin, and how we treat diabetes. The path forward isn't through more medication, but through an understanding that what we eat fundamentally influences our health outcomes. Let's stop using medicine to treat food-related diseases and start using food to treat medicine-related diseases. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. We're here to support each other, and your feedback motivates us to create content that helps you reach your goals. Until next time, remember, the change begins with you.